I just wanted to uh, jump on really quick. Um, I don't have a lot of time, so um, I just wanted to get this in here. Um, one of my favorite YouTube channels out there was um, Illuminati Eyes, which uh, is uh, Isaac Weishaupt's channel. And um, it's recently been taken down. And um, that bothered me a lot that they took the channel down because um, it seems to be, it comes in waves, the censorship, and it seems to grow more and more and more and more. And um, I'm, 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 purpose, I'm purposely not a political channel. I don't mean to be political. I don't want to be political. And um, my feelings towards Alex Jones are not um, positive. And I don't really watch a lot of Alex Jones, and I don't hold a lot of the views that Alex Jones holds. Um, and I can't speak for Isaac. The only thing I can speak for Isaac in terms of his feelings for Alex Jones is, is the evidence that I have about Isaac and his the one book of his that I've read, which is The Dark Path, and the interview that I had with Isaac and some of the correspondence back and forth that I've had with Isaac. And Isaac, he primarily, he covers conspiracy culture, but he does it through the, the lens of hip-hop culture. So um, immediately, um, immediately that lets you know that Isaac is not a bigot, and um, he doesn't engage in hate speech. He doesn't engage in anything that is um, hateful. In fact, everything that he lays out, he gives it to you almost in a way that if you did your own research, you could figure all this out for yourself. And I think that's the real crux of where we're at with this whole thing right now about um you this is all about you the individual because a shift in in thinking happened and either we're just not catching up with it or some of us never will catch up because we're not smart enough to catch up with it or we're not informed enough to catch up with it i don't know what it is but for the longest time we could never give any kind of meaningful um feedback we could never really contribute in any meaningful way to the national dialogue that went on. It was always the news channels and the media that had that locked down completely. And we, in no meaningful way, an individual could put their opinion out there about um, celebrities, about politicians, about public figures. And now we have, or we did for a time, we had that. We were able to do that. We were able to, 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 to give our ideas of those things. And some of us did it to be malicious and spiteful, and some of us didn't. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the motives of a person is when they talk on a YouTube channel or they, they open up a website or whatever it may be. Defining the motives of Alex Jones is really, is really a distraction that the mainstream media is trying to engage in with you because they want to maintain that monopoly control over your thinking. And they certainly don't want you to add your two cents in to the dialogue that's happening. So what they do is they, they create this empire of language that, that is so um, deceptive and it's so wishy-washy that there's no way to escape it. It's sort of like the idea that they've created so many laws that by the time that you walk outside of your door and get to your car, you've already violated seven or eight laws. Well, that's the same thing that happens nowadays whenever you're on YouTube or you're somewhere else and you try to add your two cents to sort of the national dialogue. And they don't want you to do that because you didn't go through the rigors of their process. You didn't go through... You didn't go through, um, you didn't run their gauntlet. You didn't do their thing. So you really don't have that right, especially if you speak about celebrities. And what this really does is it, it does expose a two-tier system. And trust me, you're not on top. And from what I can tell with Isaac, his channel is probably the most important that we can concentrate on with that because he didn't violate any of those things. He was not hateful. He didn't engage in hate speech. Um, from what I could see, he was mostly not partisan for the most part. Um, and he was ambiguous on the question of faith and religion. He openly professed to be a Christian. And as someone who would probably be 
lumped in, I think, unfairly with the New Age movement, um, I openly felt very comfortable with listening to his channel, and that's why I stuck with his channel versus other channels out there that profess to be, um, let's uh, that profess to be um, faith based, but but in fact is is thinly veiled hatefulness. And even those channels, which I won't mention, they they too deserve their own voice and they deserve their own say, because that's how it's supposed to be. But it's never been that way. Now the charge would be that you know you're being misleading, or these channels are being misleading, and they're they're misleading people. And what 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 you're basically saying is that these people aren't either smart enough, or they're not informed enough to make that decision for themselves, or they're too lazy to Google these things, or too lazy to do their own research to find out and vet whether or not this is real or not. That's ultimately what you're saying about people. And I want to read to you about. The charge of hate speech, because everyone talks about hate speech nowadays. It's it's a meaningless phrase. I want you to understand that. I'm going to read from William Burroughs, which is a, a darling of the left. So in no way am I reading from something from the bastions of the right wing. No way am I reading from the the sort of the annals of the um of the uh, you know hard right or, or whatever it may be. So this is, this is what they're employing, and then this is what most people are buying whenever they employ language, okay? So what William Burroughs says, again, this is William Burroughs, who was you know a, a godfather of the beat generation, which then influenced the hippie generation, which brought about the 60s, which brought about you know the, the, the rise of sort of what, would, what should have been the continuation of this kind of free speech. And why it's being muzzled now, I'm actually, I'm genuinely confused about genuinely confused about the only thing i can come up with is that per perhaps it did sway the election and that wasn't supposed to happen or something i genuinely I, I i honestly don't know i honestly don't know all right so anyway william burroughs says there's a definite technology for the negative use of words to cause confusion to create and aggravate conflicts and to discredit opponents this is the opposite of uh, and I don't want to read that part. This he's saying this is the opposite of what a writer does, which is I disagree with that. Anyway, here the more abstract words and meaningless statements there are, the better. The technology has been developed in the mass media by Hearst and others, refined in life and time. And those, and I've read this before, life and time were periodicals from the 20th century. And carried still further by the CIA and some subsidized literary periodicals. The technology for writing a turnoff review is so definite that one sentence will tell you when it's being used. And it is so much more complicated than just saying derogatory things about the book. It's very important for any writer to be able to absorb unfair criticism and calmly and when given the opportunity to reply to it. It's also good practice to write book reviews. In return to the matter of technology, let us consider the first question of our materials words. And then he mentions this writer of the book called um, Science and Sanity is a Great Time Saver. The fact, that, the fact that a word is not the object it represents, that this desk, whatever it may be, is not the label, quote, desk, fully realized, will save the student a lot of pointless verbal arguments. Look for abstract words that have no definite re referent. Words like communism, materialism, civilization, fascism, reductivism, and mysticism. There are as many definitions as there are users of these words. According to Korzy, Kors Bzisky, I don't know. I don't know how to pronounce the name. Look up the look up the uh, the book is called Science and Sanity. Um, a word that has no referent is a word that should be dropped from the language, and I would say certainly from the vocabulary of the writer. For example, take the word fascism. What does it mean? What is, what is the referent? Consider the phenomenon of Nazi Germany, the military expansion and, and of an industrialized country. Now consider South Africa. Oppressed, now remember, this, this was probably wrote, written in the 70s. South Africa, oppressed, designed to maintain a status quo. Are these both fascism? In short, we have so many different phenomena lumped under this word that the use of the word can only lead to confusion. So we can drop the word altogether and simply describe the various and in quote, differential political phenomena. I have been accused of being an arch materialist and a bourgeois mystic. What do these words mean? Virtually nothing. And because they mean nothing, you can argue about them for all eternity. Any words that have reference cannot be argued about. 
there is there there it is. It's called a desk, a table, whatever you like. But there's no argument is pop, but no argument is possible. All arguments stem from confusion, and all arguments are a waste of time unless your purpose is to cause confusion and waste time. And that's what we're having here, and that's what I think is happening with this Alex Jones thing. You know, Alex Jones is a lot of things, and I just I personally didn't watch his work, and I didn't um, I wasn't I wasn't a fan of the work. But you know, it says it to the end. I, I'll defend it to to the end. His his ability to say those things, and whether or not you believe um, he was spreading disinformation, and whether or not you believe he um, was um, being a, you know sort of a a parasite on this society, those things can be you know determined by the person listening, and that power they should vote with their subscribing or not subscribing to that person. And I think that um, to say it's sort of like fascism, you know, to say that he's a disinfo agent or something, and then to lump Isaac in with someone like an Alex Jones and to make him lose a channel like that just shows how far the use of this um, confusing technology has worked and how powerful it's become. You know, because nothing about Isaac Weishaupt and nothing about Illuminati Eyes or anything he did was, was, was any of those things. And I hate talking about things like this because it, it distracts from things that are very important. However, I see, I see our time to be empowered as individuals and give our honest opinion about celebrities and public figures and, pe and you know, people that, that are in the public. I think that time is, is, the sun is setting on this. And if we don't do something about it, you know, I started this hashtag, you know, Save Isaac. Send it around. Tell your story about censorship. You know, tell you know, or, or send encouragement. Do something. Speak and just speak out. If you've got a channel and you've got ten subscribers, do do a quick little uh, video like I'm doing right now about this. You know, the the great thing about dishonesty is that it's been so watered down. Virtually every everything is is fake news or dishonest or it's not real. And that's the problem with modernity, particularly one of the core components of, of postmodern thinking is that there's nothing that is really true. There's nothing that is really false. There's only gray. And yet, whenever it's politically convenient, that's whenever you can pull out that there are absolute truths and there are absolute false falsehoods out there. And that's only whenever it's politically expedient for whatever side needs to execute a particular political move at the time. Right now. Jones is one that's being pulled. Alex Jones is the one that's in court for spreading disinformation. There are channels for things like this. What I'm worried about is those of us, we're not being given a choice because we're not speaking up enough. We're not talking about it enough. If you want to listen to Alex Jones and you want to hear him talk crazy talk about frogs, you should have the ability to do that. And whether or not you believe it or not, that should be a responsibility that you have. That should be your responsibility. But don't take that away from me. You know, the work of Isaac Weishaupt has been taken away from me. I don't even like hip hop. I like the way that he executed it and I like the way that he thought. And I particularly enjoyed the fact that he didn't, use hateful speech. He wasn't mean. That was refreshing. That was incredibly refreshing. His his main sin was he crossed that 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 tier system. Were second tier systems or second tier people and public figures are first tier people in America. And that's that's the that's the sin that he he did. That that's his that's his sin in my eyes. And to me, that's what's important, is the first thing we have to recognize that it's not equal here in, in this country, and that's the first thing. And the second thing is that YouTube and Twitter and all, and all the big, and all the big uh, social media um, platforms that are out there, it is a monopoly, and this is a utility. And that's the second thing the government may need to get involved in or something they need to consider, or these platforms need to consider letting diverging points of view out there a show like this because in a lot of ways it's petty to me this is petty partisanship is petty I i'm not about that this is not what i like what i do like is listening to isaac weishaupt's channel 
and what it represents. I don't like Alex Jones. And if he's spreading falsehoods, that's on you now because now we have that power. We didn't before. There was two or three newspapers in your town, maybe, you know, and um, you had two or three TV channels, you know, and if you didn't have cable and you didn't really have a meaningful way. So there was that responsibility of a journalist back then. That's gone. There's a million ways to get the truth now. And trying to maintain the facade that there's still that, that kind of, um, that kind of um, system is, is, is false. It's not true. It's not true. There's an infinite w number of ways. You can do your own FOIA requests now. You could do it back then. But now it's, they have YouTube videos on how to do those things. They have YouTube videos on how to do everything now. You can get the information now. And if the other argument is, well, there's just not enough time, well, that's, that's sort of on you. You know, it, it's a leap of faith with anyone you listen to. And just because they have lots of money and they're in a huge corporation, don't necessarily think that they're going to be, um, they're going to be um, telling you the truth. Think about all the scandals that happened with these um, big figures within, within um, huge organizations. And I'm not, I can't mention any names. I'm afraid I'm going to be, I'm going to be taken down. I don't even know if, if, if I'm going to be pushed down for even mentioning Alex Jones or even Isaac in, in my title. You know, are they going to divert traffic away from my, my channel? You know, these things I've got to think about. Even getting this close. Isn't that, isn't that awful? You know how horrible that is? And everyone knows the only game in town is YouTube if you really want any kind of meaningful platform. And I know there are alternatives out there. And I, and I follow them on, on Twitter just to see what they're all about. But I don't know if they're going to gain any traction. I don't, I don't know if they're going to be able to be an alternative. I hope so. But I hope big channels out there that have been through this, I hope you get, I get, hope you get to hear this. And if you're a mod to a big channel, I'm not promoting myself, but let them listen to this. You know, do it in private. You don't have to promote this video, but help the guy out, man, because it means a lot more than just his channel. And this dancing around that other channels have to do where they do a backup channel and a channel underscore two, and, you know, it's, it's, this is bad. That's, that's not, this is not what it's meant to be, you know? And when you have a virtual monopoly, you truly are the utility. You are the voice and everyone knows uh, standard media that we know before it's dying. It's going away. It's going away. Alex Jones used to be Bill Hicks. Hey, man, you know what? I'm, I almost named the Saving Isaac Wise Hop in the age of Bill Hicks, you know, just to be cheeky. But I decided to go with, um, I decided to go with Alex Jones and hope that uh, more people would, would click on it, mostly my, um, my subs. And I hope you all agree with this. And I, I you know, and, and I hope you read, you know, the, it's called The Adding Machine from William Burroughs. And this particular essay that he's talking about, the, how they, we they weaponized language a long, long time ago. Um, the particular essay, it's just on creative writing. That's it. It's just called Creative Writing, William S. Burroughs, The Adding Machine. I go back to it over and over again. The reason why is that because that, 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 that kind of weaponization of language is used over and over again in, 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 in this propaganda machine. So um, eventually this will get to you and this will affect you. And I run a Mandela Effect channel. That's my primary focus. So obviously I'm already in the far kook corners of the truth or community or whatever it may be. And maybe one day they'll come after Emmys. I, I'm not sure. But um, let's use you know channels like an Isaac Weishaupt as the firewall because I think he's, he's a perfect example of, of and he says it over and over again, you know, what are your feelings? What are you thinking? Put comments down below. He doesn't blast you. He's not hateful. So um, please spread this and like this. Hit, hit the up button so it'll get some traction, hopefully. So um, that's all I wanted to say about this. And um, hopefully I'm not next. You never know. But know this, I, uh, I usually feel free to speak my mind. And I felt like I was walking through a minefield talking about this because I feel as if I even bring up a public person's name that I could end up being um, censored. And, and just so you know, all the time, I monetize my channels because I want to see, it's really interesting how they demonetize 
my um, videos at my level. I don't even have 3,000 subscribers and they demonetize my videos. It's weird. But I don't have a strike yet, so I guess that's good. And I don't engage in hate speech because I, I just it's just not my thing, man. It's just not what I want to do. And um, it's not what I want to do with the channel. It's not how I present myself. And that's what I enjoyed about Isaac Weishaupt. And um, it's a shame. Hopefully you can find some of his work out there on YouTube. I think you'd really, really, really enjoy it. Anyway, everyone, thank you very much. Um, in fact, I will be talking to Isaac on Wednesday. Um, I'll also be on Steampunk Radio on Discord on Wednesday. Being, um, I will be interviewed. It's a ornery radio chat on Discord if you want to jump out there. And... Um, That'll be very cool and very interesting and a lot of fun. So I'll be back out in a couple days or so. And um, I'll be interviewed by the great Lenny Time, T-H-Y-M-E. He does uh, he says different videos that are out there. You can look him up on YouTube and a lot of it's like Kim Trailing. And he's, total, he's totally a, um, a really great and intelligent and legitimate guy. Anyway, I'm going to jump off now, everyone. Thanks for listening. Spread it around.